okay, now that harvest is over, things are kind of settling down, I wanted to get caught up on videos, especially one that I've talked about a lot, which is screw caps versus corks. Here's a screw cap and here's a cork. Now I'm sure we've all had wines under screw cap or under cork and often wondered, hey, what's the difference of these two? What are some things and reasons why winemakers may use a screw cap versus a cork? And what's with all these different cork alternatives, if you will. And I use both. I use screw cap for some wines and I use cork for other wines. So I have a little bit of information on my thought process behind it as well. So I thought it'd be fun to shed some light on this topic. Oh crap. <laughs> So I wanted to break this video down into three categories because screw caps and corks, that's a big topic. So I just wanted to keep it to these three categories, which are kind of cost, um, the perception, and then the big one that I want to talk about is OTR. We'll get to that in a minute. First up, the cost. Now, I think most consumers probably realize that, hey, a screw cap is cheaper than a cork. We can make these pretty, pretty inexpensive. Um, you know, I've heard as low as a few pennies. To, that's not my cost, but I've heard some places can get down to a few pennies to a nickel, uh, but probably a nickel to 35 cents is a good round number for a screw cap. Cork, on the other hand, is a little bit more expensive. Um, it can range anywhere from 50 to 75 cents all the way up to two bucks, depending on the type of cork, what kind of treatment it goes through, and also the length of cork. So all those factor into the overall cost of a cork. And then obviously the bigger wineries with economies of scale can probably drive that price really, really low versus a, you know medium to small winery. So I think perception wise, most consumers know that this is cheaper. So if you see this on a bottle of wine, you may perceive that wine to be cheaper. I think that this is definitely the case for years ago. I think that trend is kind of swinging the other way where now, uh, especially as American consumers, we're getting more and more used to screw caps and more and more used to screw caps uh, on really good bottles of wine. The other perception with screw caps is that those wines don't age well. That's not necessarily true, but again, I do think that that is still some consumer behavior that we still hold on to. For instance, I bet just based on consumer behavior, if there's two bottles of wine sitting there and one has a screw cap and one doesn't, you may be more likely to grab the screw cap and open that one on a Tuesday night versus one with a cork. It just seems easier. It just seems, oh, let's open that. It's not it's not a big ordeal. We can just open it real easily, which again is a kind of a plus for some screw caps. I've had customers that say that they love rosé under screw cap because then when they go to the pool or go somewhere, they don't have to worry about a corkscrew. They can just open it and, and go. With a cork, obviously you're gonna need some sort of device to get the cork out. It looks like in college when we just jammed it in there. You could do that. I don't recommend it. Because a screw cap is pretty, pretty nice. It's pretty consistent. Um, they can be cleaned pretty easily. It's not like it's an organic material like a cork from a cork tree. So there are some benefits of screw caps. One thing that I like pointing out from the from a bottling perspective is wine that's under screw cap. As a winemaker, I, you have to pay a little close attention to this because there's more headspace, if you will. Like here's two bottles of, of our wine. If you look right here, you might be able to see this cork comes all the way down and then here's the liquid. The liquid's right here. So you got like a few millimeters of headspace. The screw cap wine, the, the wine is filled to about the same level, probably about right here. So from here up, it's just all air. Now I have another video coming talking about bottling, how wine gets from a barrel or tank into a bottle, because that headspace should be nitrogen and two gas, but we'll cover that in another topic. So now I want to talk briefly about corks. Corks themselves, they kind of fall into, well, many different categories, but let's just keep it simple from two. Natural punch cork and cork alternatives, let's just say that. And I'm not talking about like the plastic thing and all those that you might see in the grocery stores. This is still corks that are made from cork, but they're alternative in, a, in the way that they're made. Because a natural punch cork is basically a cork that was punched out of the bark of a tree. So this is how it was done years ago and still done to, to this year. Now our technology is better where we can treat these natural corks and we can do better things, but still you're dealing with a natural organic product, if you will, and sometimes the corks on the, the south side of the tree might be different than the corks on the north side of the tree. Like I know my grass grows different on the south side of my house than it does on the, on the north side of the house. The north side of my house has more shade, therefore it doesn't get as much sunlight. The, the grass on the south side needs needs more water, needs more attention because it gets more heat and more direct sun. Same thing is true of a tree. The south side of a tree is gonna get more sun than the north side of a tree. 
well, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. So this is one downfall of natural punch corks. And this brings it to the next topic of OTR. OTR stands for oxygen transfer rate. Basically, how much oxygen is getting into the wine through the sides of the bottle. Also, there is some oxygen in the middle of the cork that gets in there too, but OTR, basically we stand, we, we talk about the oxygen transfer rate, how much oxygen is creeping in through the sides of the bottle down into the wine. So with a screw cap, we know this rate. We can order screw caps that have certain amounts of OTR. If you want this many milligrams a liter of oxygen per month, or if you want this many milligrams a liter of oxygen per month, you can order your screw caps to fit your need for your wine. And that's pretty easy to do from a manufacturing standpoint. On natural punch corks, that's very difficult to do because, um, because when a cork goes into a bottle, and again, I have another bottling video coming, it's coming, so you know, stay tuned for that. But when a cork goes into a bottle, a cork starts out pretty fat like this, then it gets squeezed, and then it gets pushed into the bottle, and then it re-expands, that, el that elasticity re-expands. And how tight it expands then determines your OTR. So again, with a natural punch cork, as you squeeze in, put it in, each one may expand at different rates. The north side of the tree might be different than the south side of the tree, and the, the west side, or what have you, and there could be different trees. So each natural cork may be slightly different as it expands back in the bottle. So after you bottle, you know, from a wine from a winemaker standpoint, day one, probably no big deal with those natural corks. Day two, probably no big deal. Day 100, maybe a slight difference. Day, you know, 365, maybe different. Day, you know, call it two years, three years down the road, then you might really start to see inconsistencies in the bottle of wine. You might have a case of wine that you open up two years later and each bottle may taste, may, may taste a little bit different because different amounts of oxygen got into the bottle. Again, I'm always kind of cautious here. Different winemakers do different things and there's no right or wrong way to do it. So what I like to use is a different type of cork called a Dion cork. Here's one of, one of my corks. Because what these are, these are cork, natural cork, that gets chopped up into tiny little pieces and then recombined. So it still is cork. It's recombined with a specific amount of elasticity. So each cork, cork, it's made from natural cork, each cork has the same natural elasticity back in the bottle. And just like screw caps, you can order different corks for different levels. So you can have a Diom 1, that it lets in a, a, a good amount of oxygen. So let's say you got a Cabernet that you have to put in the bottle, but it still needs a lot of oxygen, a lot of the tannins are still linked up, you could use a Diom 1 if you want. There's Diom 5s, those are most of the ones that I use are Diom 5s. They let in a little bit of oxygen, not too much, but just a little bit. There's DM10s, DM30s, DM50s, and I, I don't own that company, but as the number goes up, the OTR goes down. I think it's kind of silly. The number goes up, the OTR goes down, yeah. So like a DM30 is a pretty tight cork. It has a very tight seal. It doesn't allow that much oxygen in. So let's say you got a wine that tastes great. You're tasting on a barrel, you're like, holy cow, this is amazing. I don't need any more oxygen. I want this thing to, to stay exactly like this. Maybe use a DM30. Again, winemaker decision, no right or wrong way to do it. So when it comes to corks, natural cork versus these DM corks, that's really what I'm focused on is that OTR. That's what I'm really, really focused on because that's the main one. There is, you can also order these corks, it's kind of crazy. You can also order these corks with a pre amount of oxygen in the cork. So right when you put it in, then that oxygen goes into the wine. So if you just want a little bit of oxygen, you can order a certain cork that has a little bit of oxygen, that's gonna end up into the wine as well. And then your OTR, which is the transfer rate on the sides. So again, it's kind of cool, it's kind of fun. It's not just, just another winemaker tool um, in, in our arsenal of if we know, hey, this Syrah, I'm gonna do this, and my Rosé, I'm gonna do this. And then you can kind of order your corks for that purpose. Kind of like, why would you eat a steak with a butter knife, right? You, you got a steak knife for steak and a butter knife for butter. I don't know if that's it. And then too, another obvious thing, I think, but when you're, you know, from, from my perspective, when I'm ordering bottles, ordering glass bottles, you have to know ahead of time if you're gonna do screw cap or cork. You can't take, well, this is a really nice bottle of Bordeaux, but you can't take this and put it on the truck and say, hey, put a screw cap on here. This is a cork finish where my bottle would be on yay, when you take this off, that's a, a screw cap finish. So anyway, so just a kind of little tidbit on glass bottles is that you have to order and or manufacture and or make or order the ones that you know you need. If it's gonna be screw caps, you gotta make sure you got your screw caps and you gotta make sure you got your bottle that's meant for screw caps. 
obviously. And one last thing that's kind of fun on corks is inside the bottle, if you put an empty bottle, put your finger in there, you'll feel like a little, uh, it's not perfectly smooth all the way down. It's smooth on the outside of the bottle, but the inside is not perfectly smooth. It's called a cork stop. So you put the cork in there and the, when, the, when the machine puts in there and then re-expands, it's kind of like it grabs on, it's like a little lip, if you will. Like I can feel it right here, about right there. I can feel this lip. So it's not, not the very tip, it's right here. You can feel this lip, it's called a cork stop. Basically, so the cork doesn't pop back off or go down. It re-expands and that little piece of the glass helps hold the cork in its place. So yeah, that's kind of it. That's kind of a, um, a, a kind of a quick breakdown of screw caps versus cork. Again, here, I just try to give information. It's not like I try to say what's right or wrong or what's better or worse. I use both. I think both have their place, at least in our portfolio and most wineries portfolio. And I do think screw caps and cork technology have come a long way, which ultimately help you know, the end consumer. And again, one thing I didn't really mention is cork taint. I, I was saving that for another video because that's kind of a hard topic just to throw in. So cork taint, that's, uh, you know, I'll save that for another video. So hope you enjoyed this video again uh, on screw caps and corks. Again, kind of a touchy subject. Don't want to, you know, uh, say one way is better than the other. Multiple different ways to do it. Uh, just wanted to kind of give some some uh, background and some information on my thought process when deciding between cork, natural cork, alternative cork, and, and screw caps. But thanks so much again for being a wine club member. Keep drinking wine and keep looking up. Have a good day.